Good day, everyone. Welcome to Mind Builders Hub. And for today, we're going to discuss tropical cyclogenesis. Remember that tropical cyclogenesis is the process by which tropical cyclones, also known as hurricanes or typhoons, in different parts of the world form. And these intense weather systems are characterized by strong winds, heavy rainfall, and low pressure centers. Tropical cyclones can cause significant damage when they make landfall, making it important to understand how they develop. Here's our introduction about tropical cyclogenesis. I have a question. Have you experienced this kind of strong typhoon? How about where were you during the typhoon and what are you doing during the aftermath? Lastly, how do you feel after seeing the people affected by the typhoon? So in here, we are going to analyze tropical cyclogenesis, identify the names used for tropical cyclone based on its origin, and we need to classify the stages of tropical cyclone. So from the word itself, tropical means that it is a geographical starting point, which is usually hot and humid, while a cyclone is a meteorological term which refers to its cyclonic circulation. The Earth has the northern and the southern hemisphere. You will see that where, when there is a strong wind in the northern hemisphere, it circulates counterclockwise, while in the southern hemisphere, it circulates in a clockwise pattern. So the tropical cyclone has different names in various parts of the world where it specifically developed. Number one, we're going to call it hurricane when it is formed in the North Atlantic Ocean, affecting the Caribbean Sea. It is called a typhoon if that forms in the Northwest Pacific Ocean affecting Southeast Asia and West Philippines and Japan. It is called severe tropical cyclone if that forms in the Southeastern Indian and Southwest Pacific Ocean. It is called severe cyclonic storm if that forms in the North Indian Ocean. It is a tropical cyclone if that forms in the Southwest Indian Ocean. Though a tropical cyclone is known in different names, it has a uniform procedure of how it is formed and developed. Like, when we say tropical cyclogenesis, it is the process of cyclone development. Where, number one, the warm ocean surface with temperature of 26.5 degrees Celsius to a depth of, the, of at least 50 meters below the surface is favorable to maintain warm core that powers up a tropical cyclone. Tropical cyclones primarily over warm waters, ocean waters, typically between 5 to 30 degrees latitude in both the northern and southern hemisphere. And this warm sea surface uh, provides the necessary heat and moisture for their development. Number two is the presence of the intertropical conversion zone, or also known as the ITCC. In here, you will, you will see that in near this equator, or about let's say uh, 5 to 30 degrees latitude you will see the direction of the wind in different direction and they are moving towards each other number three there is a greater amount of water vapor in the middle and in the lower troposphere troposphere is said to be the first layer of our atmosphere where most weather disturbances happen. So if there's a greater amount of water vapor, then therefore it fueled the cyclone, cyclone coal. 
Next is, there is enough Coriolis force to deflect the converging wind, which is at least 5 degrees of latitude from the equator. The Coriolis effect is caused by the rotation of the Earth, and it is essential for cyclone rotation. In the northern hemisphere, cyclone spins counterclockwise, while in the southern hemisphere, they spin clockwise. There is a pre-existing low-level disturbance within the ITCC. That's number 5. Cyclones often begins with a small disturbances or clusters of thunderstorms and these disturbances may be triggered by various factors such as this one, the ITCC, the Intertropical Convergence Zone, or the Atmospheric Waves. Number 6, if there is a weak vertical wind shear that is less than 10 meter per second, and with this low wind shear, uh, there will be a minimal change in wind direction, and speed with height in the atmosphere is crucial for cyclone formation. In atmospheric instability, a warm moist layer of air needs to be overlaid by cooler, drier air aloft, creating atmospheric instability. So let us now classify the tropical cyclone. In here, I have here the tropical depression and we may say that there is a tropical depression if the wind speed is 61 km per hour or less than that. It is an organized system of clouds and thunderstorms with a defined circulation and the wind um, or the wind speed is 61. Next is tropical storm in a tropical storm has the wind speed of 62 to 88 kilometer per hour and the storm is somehow given a name next category is the severe tropical storm wherein the wind speed is 89 to 170 117 km per hour. Next is the category Typhoon, wherein the wind speed is 118 to 184 km per hour. And the system is classified as a typhoon in the Pacific. And lastly, if the wind escalate to 185 km uh, per hour or above, it is now being called a super typhoon. So, this is the recent uh, classification of the typhoon from tropical depression down to super typhoon. And we are using a particular color coding for you to identify which particular part in the Philippines will experience signal number one, two, three, four, and five. For number one, it's um, it's blue. For two, is yellow. Three is for orange. Four, red, and five, purple. And I hope you learned something about the tropical cyclogenesis. They have different names based on where they appear or form, but in the process, they have the same process. Tropical cyclones play a significant role in Earth's climate system. They're distributing heat and moisture and affecting water patterns in the regions they impact. Understanding the process of tropical cyclogenesis is crucial for disaster preparedness and management in vulnerable areas prone to this powerful storm. And I hope you learned something from our discussion. Thank you very much and bye-bye.